Hello and welcome to Digital Boardroom, coming to you from Etail France. I'm Sally Green and today I'm joined by Fred Mazzala, founder and CEO of Blah Blah Car. Fred, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. So perhaps you could start off telling us a little bit about how you've built Blah Blah Car from nothing to what it is now in just four years. So yeah, the, the story really started a bit longer than that, but then uh, really we started to make the company a company in 2009, so that's four years ago. Uh, so what we have done first was to build a product which was really, really high quality and in which uh, people could find the service they were looking for. So what Blah Blah Car does today is connecting drivers with empty seats to passengers looking for the same trip. So this allows uh, drivers to offset the cost of their gas and tolls, and this allows passengers to find trips for uh, an unbeatable price. Like you could go, go from uh, Oxford to, to Manchester for 20 quid, something like that. So that's, uh, that's the way it works. And um, so we built a high quality product. We built trust between the members of the community so you have uh, lots of ratings, you have the pictures of the people, you know who you're riding with. And so uh, besides that, we've built uh, an international expansion. So we've made it so that the service could become international across the borders. And we built teams locally uh, in all many countries in Europe. So we built um, teams in Madrid, in Paris, in London, in Warsaw, uh, in Milan and in Hamburg. So that's how we, we managed to build uh, the entire thing. And at the same time, we found uh, um, funds from uh, several VCs, including Axel Partners based in London, uh, which is the fund uh, who funded uh, companies like Facebook, Dropbox, Spotify, and Kayak. And so we are now becoming a real uh, international project, yeah. international company. You certainly are. It sounds really exciting. Um, and what's, what's one of the biggest challenges that you're, you're, you're having to face? One of the biggest challenge was actually to have people trust each other on the platform. So to have a um, service that would enable each member to show how trustworthy he or she is so that people would want to ride with him, to, uh, to share a ride with him. So um, we've made many improvements to the service. So each member can diffuse information which is declared, meaning their name, uh, first name, last name, picture, biography, preferences, but also people can rate each other. So it's very important because you want to know when you're writing with John or with uh, Natalie, if he or she has good ratings from the previous people he or she write it with. Um, and then we made an engagement system in which people show that they are really serious about coming and they will not just uh, uh, drop uh, in the middle of the transaction. And then we, we made a lot of moderation of the, on the platform. So we have a full customer support and we actually moderate all the content that goes through the platform, the text and the images. And we also have a platform which is now social and it's connected to Facebook, LinkedIn or uh, other services like this uh, in which you can show that you have actually a social life, uh, a social uh, connection with your profile and it brings a lot of trust. We've made studies uh, which show that um, people trust each other uh, very high on the platform today for, right, for sharing rights together. And actually, we asked the people to rank in between one and five how much trust they would give to several kinds of people. And we actually found out that for um, Facebook contacts, uh, for uh, colleagues or for neighbors, the level of trust was around 3.5 out of five. For family and friends, it's around 4.7 out of five. And for people in the Blah Blah Car network with the profiles, uh, which are with the pictures and rated and everything, the level of trust is 4.2 out of yeah. 5, which is much higher than neighbors or colleagues and almost as uh, like, uh, like friends and family. So this allows the network to work. And so uh, drivers trust passengers, passengers trust drivers uh, with information that they can find on the platform. And you, and you built all of this starting from the point of asking people for ratings. Yes, we're asking like uh, declarative information as well at the very beginning. We yeah. only had that. We had like uh, your first name, last name, and then we added pictures, preferences, and then we added the ratings, uh, engagement, moderation. 
So everything. And, and was this a solution that you built yourself or was there a solution provided that helped you figure it all out and build the infrastructure? I uh, know the, um, the, actually the community, the members told us what to do. Right. So we, uh, we have a service which we can use as well. So we are our own users. We are members of the community. I do write share a lot and all my associates and all the, um, the people in the company do write share a lot. So we know our product, we know what works, we know what doesn't work. When something doesn't work, we fix it. And so we are also in contact with the entire community. We call uh, all the people using the platform to make sure that we always have the best service and we make it, we improve it. So actually all the trust that we brought in the platform is due to the interactions we had with members who told us what they wanted to see on the platform. They wanted to see the pictures, the preferences, the ratings, and moderation and everything. So we actually really listened to the community to build the best product. What were some of the implementation challenges that you faced as you were building this system yourself? We faced both the um, complexity of the product we had to build so that it would become very simple for the people to make their transactions online. And we also faced, uh, but like any other platform, the complexity of building a robust platform that, that is able to uh, take all the volume, all the requests uh, from uh, hundreds of thousands of uh, people every day. And so it was uh, two challenges to make a really nice and easy service to use and very robust so that it could carry uh, the entire community, which now has m over 3 million members in Europe. So for retailers that um, are grappling with this challenge of trying to build customer trust and build customer loyalty, um, what would be your, big, your greatest piece of advice for them? I think it's transparency. Uh, I think we are now at a stage where uh, all the uh, users, uh, all the members, all the people are actually waiting for companies and for services to be transparent and to tell them exactly the truth, exactly uh, what they do, uh, to face their own difficulties. There is no shame in uh, saying what difficulties you're facing. And actually, uh, people are more loyal when you tell them the difficulties that you are uh, resolving than when you just try to hide uh, what you're doing. So I think there is a lot of value in uh, uh, being more and more transparent and explaining to our customers the things we do well, the things we want to do better. And I think uh, this uh, helps loyalty because people like to know that they actually leave the story with the service they're using and they are not only users of the service. Fantastic. Fred, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. It's a really interesting story. I wish you all the very best of luck as you continue to grow. Thank you very much.